It is Fortress Macedonia Park for Perth Glory. It may be a temporary home, but with three wins and two draws in five matches, it is certainly where the heart is at the moment tonight. The Glory welcome Melbourne victory. Stone motherless and winless in their past four, and now without their leading goal scorer, Nick D'Agostino, completing a move to Norway just a few hours ago. Perth owner Tony Sage has described the victory as glory be, Tony Popovich returns to the city that he delivered a grand final and desperate to return his current employer to its former glory. Certainly no missing that man, Bruno Fornaroli, at the back of the Melbourne Victory lineup as he returns to his former employer. Melbourne Victory in their bright yellow away kit as Mustafa Amini leads out the home side as they look to continue that unbeaten run at their temporary home of Macedonia Park, which incidentally is a full house officially tonight. Ruben Zajkovic is, on, is uh, able to celebrate that late, late show against Sydney FC. He has the cavalry back on deck as well. Salim Khalifi straight back into the 11 after limping out of the win over Western Sydney with a groin injury. Jacob Muir makes way. David Williams is in from the off as Luke Ivanovic is left out of the match day squad because of the addition of the man in number 22 on the substitute bench, Adam Taggart will make his first appearance on his return to Perth Glory. Anthony Burt Gilroy also in line for his first minutes of the season. There is Davy Williams, left it until the 102nd minute to rescue that point for Perth Glory against Sydney FC. It was his second goal of the campaign. Still a little way to go to match the 11 that he was able to score in 27 games at Wellington in his prior A-League sojourn. Tony Popovich is keeping things similar outside, of course, of that headline news that Nick D'Agostino is off to Viking in Norway. Who else but Bruno Fornaroli against his former club? Unchanged outside of that. However, Roderick Miranda and Cadete do return via the bench. Ray Marchand still absent as he tries to get over that rocket of a shot against Adelaide last week. Ruben Zadkovic has only won one of his first 12 games in charge, but he has won four of his last 10, and incidentally scored twice as a player against Melbourne Victory. That was the only club that he scored multiple goals against. And Perth Glory looking to continue their fine run at home, but could it be that man who spoils the party his return. Stephen Lucas gets us underway. Melbourne victory in their bright yellow away kits up against Perth Glory in the traditional purple and orange. Alongside me for the call this evening is Phil Moss. Mossy, a really tantalising affair this one. Certainly is. Good evening, Glenn, and to all our viewers. This is a game that reeks of desperation for Melbourne victory. Tony Popovich has to spark a three-point night for his team tonight. And for Rubens Adkovic, you've got to give him credit. He's been saying it, he had been saying it for weeks, that they weren't too far away from turning things into points, especially at home, and they've certainly done that of late. So victory will be looking to make inroads early. Bruno Fornaroli was trying to pick out Chris Economides. He does win the attacking throw. Five former Perth Glory players in this Melbourne victory lineup, of course. Chris Economides, Bruno Fornaroli, Jake Brimmer, and we're all there in the glory days of the glory under Tony Popovich. Here's a shot early from long range from Noah Smith. Not testing out Cameron Cook in the Perth Glory goal, but a sign of intent early from the victory. Certainly is, and it was great technique from Noah Smith. This is very difficult to execute. Strange to see clubs like Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory in the situations that they are. Victory looking to turn things around now. Here's a decent ball over the top from Noah Smith to Bruno Fornaroli on the right foot. Snaps that one, but it goes across the front of Cameron Cook's near post and doesn't trouble the Perth custodian, but Bruno Fornaroli looks like he's got his scoring boots on tonight. Well, that's exactly the service that Bruno Fornaroli thrives on. It's almost a signature move from him, isn't it? Davey Williams can't keep the ball for Perth Glory and now an opportunity for Brimmer first time snaps at that one just wide after Fornaroli thought he may have been fouled but they got the advantage away anyway 
Yeah, Fornaroli getting into a little bit of a street fight with Mustafa Amini. Here is Brillante, and now Gary up. Economides, can you get a decent ball in here? Holds onto it, onto the left foot. Economides goes himself, but it's straight at Cameron Cook, who takes it comfortably. And confidently. They were good hands from Cameron Cook. You can see here, Economides just cuts in on that left hand, on that left foot, I should say. Get some good purchase on it. I dare say he was going for that back post area. Ryan Williams feeds this one for Khalifi. They come again, Perth Glory, but once again, it's Jason Guerrier on this occasion. And again, it's Jelicic who's denied, but that is wonderful defending from the victory right back. And again, it's down this right-hand side by Perth Glory. If it's not Khalifi, it's Ryan Williams. They are causing Melbourne victory all sorts of problems down Noah Smith's side. Lisby again with his second corner from this side. It's another deep one, and once again, it's easily dealt with by the victory. Noah Smith, the man who had his heart in his mouth for a brief period. I guess the question mark is around the whole natural position um, definition because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still unconvinced whether natural position is an easy one for referees to decide on. Nonetheless, Glory have another corner. This one's towards the front post. Acton can't punch it clear. Katrumbus, oh, what a follow-up from the Melbourne victory goalkeeper to palm that one over the bar after he fluffed the punch on the initial corner. Katrumbus thought for all money that he'd scored. Well, what a save from Matt Acton. As we see, brilliant delivery coming in. Acton fluffed his lines there, and then a great strike by Katrumbus. Look at that for flat whip delivery causing Matt Acton all sorts of problems. But he doesn't give it up, and he gets across and gets a big hand to it. Noah Smith trying to pick out Bruno Fornaroli. He does. And now Brimmer once again on the edge of the area. Jake Brimmer so close to burying that one in the bottom corner. Cameron Cook was just about beaten. It was a thunderous strike from Brimmer against his former club, but it goes just wide. Yeah, wonderful action by Melbourne Victory, and Jake Brimmer is exactly the player you want on the end of that. Almost a carbon copy of last week's goal from Nick D'Agostino. Lisby and Amini. Khalifi. Getting involved now as well. One-on-one -on -one with Smith, who stands up well. Gives away the throw. Good defending from Smith. He had to get that spot on. He did commit to the tackle. We'll give him some confidence after Perth. He really launched some raids down his side. He's in 36 minutes or so. Amini looks for options. Decides to go himself. Now he does link up with David Williams. Ryan Williams at close range. And Ryan Williams' scuffed shot might have got a deflection on the way through. Matt Acton was rooted to the spot on the front post. It nestles inside the back stick. And Ryan Williams has the goal to give Perth Glory a 1-0 lead. And absolutely no surprise that Mustafa Amini and Khalifi were involved in the build-up to that goal. Fantastic finish in the end by Ryan Williams. No surprise has come down that right-hand side for Perth Glory. They've huffed. They've puffed and they've finally blown the house down on the Harvey Norman replay. That is a really good finish from Ryan Williams. A little bit of luck with the nutmegs, of course, but he was in the right place at the right time and he got the right finish. Might have just got a slight deflection on Matt Bozanowski on the way through. Jason Guerrier can't do anything about it either. Perth Glory won't care how it goes in because it's a goal that gives them the lead at home once again. Flick on, doesn't quite come off. It allows Ryan Williams to break again, the goal scorer. Still he goes, Ryan Williams, this one from distance, and it forces the best out of Matt Acton to parry that one away for a Perth Glory throw. Another great opportunity for Ryan Williams. Wonderful football, wasn't it? Transition moment, Ryan Williams gets on the ball. Davey Williams driving the Melbourne victory defence deeper and deeper with his forward run, which ended up being a decoy. And then a great action from Matt Acton to keep the ball out of his net. Ryan Williams' goal, the difference. His second of the campaign. Falami with one final opportunity. The ball stays in play. Bodnar had thought had gone out. Falami ultimately loses out. And it'll all be about possession for Perth Glory now until Stephen Lucas brings a halt to play. As he does, Bruno Fornaroli thought he might have won the ball off Katrumbus, but that's all she wrote through the first 
half of action at Macedonia Park. It's been enthralling, Phil Moss, and it's Ryan Williams with the difference at the moment. Yeah, it's been a wonderful half of football. Melbourne victory with a really fast start. Perth Glory got themselves into the game and then caused all sorts of problems down that right-hand side that eventually led to that go-ahead goal. Tony Popovich is having a word to Stephen Lucas. He's as frustrated as his teammates are and his players are at halftime. Ryan Williams has given Perth Glory a lead over Melbourne victory. It is Perth 1, Melbourne 0. Welcome back to Macedonia Park. In the meantime, though, where this man, Ryan Williams, has the goal that's given Perth Glory a 1-0 lead over Melbourne victory at halftime. Can they go on with it in the second half? They have a great record leading this season. Three out of four. They've gone on to win after scoring first victory. Have lost seven of eight, conceding first. I understand there has been one change at half time. We'll bring you confirmation of that. We get it. It may have been Noah Smith for Cadete. We'll stand by for that confirmation. As Stephen Lucas gets us back underway. The Melbourne victory left back was on a yellow card. Cadete coming back from injury for the victory and maybe Tony Popovich just wanting to shore things up. Again, here is Cadete with some early defending to do. As Perth Glory look to ram home that advantage, Phil Moss. Yeah, and that's uh, some action taken by Tony Popovich at half time. As we spoke about many times, it was Perth Glory causing all sorts of problems down Victory's left-hand side. Uh, Smith looks to have been a sacrificial lamb for that. There is confirmation on your screen as Perth Glory look for a fast start in the second half. Jacob Burns spoke about the lack of a fast start in the first half, but Ruben Zadkovic looks to have had them fired up in the Macedonia Park dressing rooms. Here's Jelicic towards the byline. Tries to cut back. Brillante gives away a corner. And they certainly seem like they can smell blood in the water. Perth Glory side against the Melbourne Victory team who are Rooted to the bot bottom of the Zuzu U A League men's ladder. Wozanowski's long ball is headed clear by Clisby. He doesn't get too many opportunities in a forward position. Bearing down on goal, Jack Clisby. We saw a cracker of a goal that he scored at that very end at Macedonia Park earlier in the season with his right foot. Absolutely brilliant finish. Western United caught us all off guard with that right boot. Oh, and now it's on here between Jack Clisby and Chris Economides. You fear there might be cards involved here. Clisby's given Economides a pretty hefty push. They've come from everywhere. Economides has stayed down. Kurt Ams, the VAR, will be looking over this one. Didn't seem to be much in the initial challenge. Economides lashes out, Filmos, and then Clisby lets him know about it. Oh, I think. Economides could be in big trouble here. Looks like as they go to ground, just goes out of camera view there. It looks to me like Economides might have lashed out with his right foot. Jack Clisby's being called over as well. You might see Clisby get a yell. Oh, he's gone to the back pocket here, Stephen Lucas. What colour is this going to be? It's a red card for Jack Clisby for the hand around the throat of Chris Economides. Is that going to be the only red card we see here? The red goes into the back pocket, the yellow comes out. So it's Chris Economides who will stay on the park with a yellow after lashing out at Jack Clisby. And it's Clisby who sees Red Filmos. Well, I have to say I'm gobsmacked. I didn't see that coming at all. Here's the replay. They both go to ground. There's the lash out from Economides. Gee whiz. Chris Economides, I think, has potentially dodged a massive bullet here, unless we're going to VAR. Yeah, he hasn't dodged the bullet yet because Stephen Lucas has been called over by Kurt Ams to review the footage. And I get the feeling that if we're going to see one red, we have to see two here because 
Jack Clisby has no reason to lash out unless Chris Economides does that. And you're right, where's the hand around the throat? Well, I think the hand around the throat allegedly comes after, after he's the push. Chris Economides to ground. But none of this happens if Chris Economides doesn't lash out with his foot. So Jack Clisby's making his way towards the tunnel. We understand that's not the decision that is being reviewed. So that red card at this stage will remain. But could we be down to 10 on 10 here? Stephen Lucas is looking for Chris Economides here. He's rescinding the yellow card. He goes to the back pocket. We're down to 10 on 10. Economides is shown a red card. And you'd have to say, Phil Moss, that one is justice. Justice has prevailed, in my opinion, definitely. None of that happens if Chris Economides doesn't lash out with that right foot. Clearly, his studs are in contact with Jack Clisby. Clearly, there's force. And the right decision has prevailed there. I'm still not convinced that what Jack Clisby did was a red card. I know you can't retaliate. But from what I saw, I just think a yellow would have been sufficient for Clisby. Played on the right-hand side of the park in the first half. He switched over to the left now with the send-off of Clisby. Here's Jelicic. One-on-one -on -one with Broxham. Broxham is happy to give away the corner. It's a good block in the end from the veteran. Showed all his experience, Broxham, didn't he? Stayed on his feet. He knows Jelicic is tricky with the ball at his feet. Stuck to his task, Lee Broxham. Just like the warrior that he is. It will be Jelicic with the in-swinging right-footed corner. Towards the middle of the six-yard box. Acton under pressure. He gets a paw to it. Khalifi links up with Jelicic again. Acton pause clear for a second time. Amini on the strike on the volley. It was a tough one because it was bouncing awkwardly, but Matt Acton's come up strong once again. Well, Matt Acton's working harder than a field player at the moment. An outfield player. Some brilliant actions there. Stuck to the task and did well, did his job. Great strike from Mustafa Amini, wasn't it, from outside the box. Now the switch from Amini. Beavers has found himself forward. Jelicic tries to dink one over for Ryan Williams. Garia gets ahead in it, and then it's cleared away. Khalifi again. Takes on Garia one-on-one. -on -one. Broxham sliding in again. Last touch off Perth Glory, though. It'll be a goal kick. Don't go anywhere. Stay glued to your television sets. Look at this action. This is a strike from Mustafa Amini just inside the box. I stand corrected. Brilliant technique to keep it hard and low. Perth Glory sensing a real opportunity here. They are going for the jugular. He said to his players, same principles. So he changed the shape to a 4 4 1, which is the right move, the smart move to get the numbers in the right areas, but then yelled out these players' same principles, so those principles have been, have been drilled into the players' minds. So they know exactly what they have to do. Petrumbus gives away the corner. Jake Brimmer will be the man to take it. The outswinger, one Stephen Lucas is happy with. The jostling for position. Around about that penalty spot. Here's Brimmer's delivery. Oh, it's a wonderful strike from Roderick Miranda. Can you believe it? Melbourne victory. A back on level pegging. And it's through an amazing strike from the centre back. Well, what a wonderfully athletic finish from Roderick Miranda. How the ball found him at that back post is a question for Perth Glory and their coaching staff later on. But look at this as the ball's played into that back post area. That is incredible from Roderick Miranda on the Harvey Norman replay. So athletic. That's a great camera angle. And there is a little deflection there. Is it off Josh Brillante? He might claim that, Josh Brillante, in the end. He didn't know much about it. And you can't be claiming that one off Roderick. He wouldn't dare take it off him. That last attack from... Melbourne victory was just sloppy from Ben Falami. Was too casual with that ball. He was in a really good area. Potentially hurt Perth Glory. 
Duncan finds Douse. Here's the ball towards the middle. And guess who? Welcome back to the A-League, Adam Taggart. He marks it with a goal. It's another beautiful delivery from Jacob Dows, who helped David Williams get the equaliser last week. This time he turns provider. And the business by Ruben Zakovic to welcome Adam Taggart back to Perth pays off. It's 2-1. Well, that is a way to announce yourself back at your hometown club. Adam Taggart, take a bow. What a wonderful delivery from Dows. But Adam Taggart on the Harvey Norman replay has made a very, very difficult header look so simple. The hang time in the air as he gets up early, and look at that, the control on that header is absolutely first class from the Socceroo striker. Welcome back, Adam Taggart. He just knows how to find the back of his net. There'll still be plenty to play once we get to 90 minutes, Filmos. Yeah, there certainly will be. I've seen a lot more out of time in the football games at the World Cup and since the World Cup. Cameron Cook goes into the book for slowing things down. Gee, I wouldn't mind 15 to 20 minutes of injury time for this game. It's had just about everything in it. I think there were 13 last week from memory when the lights went out against Sydney FC. Oh, Matt Acton has tried to be clever against Jacob Douse. And it's all gone wrong for the Melbourne victory custodian. Adam Taggart's got a double. But it's all come about on the back of a huge mistake from Matt Acton, trying to get past Jacob Dowse. It was won back by the Perth Glory left back. And again, Taggart on his return. He has a double and Perth Glory are on their way, 3-1. Well, that is something Matt Acton will not look back fondly on. That's a mistake, a big mistake from the keeper who otherwise has been absolutely brilliant tonight. But again, it's the delivery from Dowse that causes all the problems on the Harvey Norman replay. And it's that man, Adam Taggart, the hometown hero, is back in town, announcing himself with two goals tonight on his homecoming. Brilliant poachers finish as well. Look at that from Taggart. Just peels off and then attacks the ball to create that space and get off the shoulder of the defender. Absolutely superb from Adam Taggart and Douse again. Great delivery. Checks his watch. He calls an end to this one. It finished 10 on 10. Jack Clisby and Chris Economides got an early bath. And Adam Taggart got a late double. What a return to the Isuzu Ute A-League men's competition. A frustrated Cadete. It's, it's finished at Macedonia Park. Perth Glory 3. Melbourne victory one.